Okay, graphical approaches for decision making. Decision trees and influence diagrams both provide a graphical approach to modeling decision problems. There are three types of nodes which are used both in influence diagrams and decision trees and are integrated into graphs or networks connected by arrows. Influence diagram provides a visual outlook of the decisions, uncertain events and consequences. Moreover, these provide the subsequent interrelationships that exist within a decision problem and ensure that compact probabilistic structure. An influence diagram is a network consisting of directed graph G is equal to capital N and capital A and associated nodes, sets and functions. It contains three types of nodes in the set N, partitions into sets D, C and V. Now decision node. There may be zero or more decision nodes in the set D drawn as a square corresponding to choices available to the decision maker. Chance node. There are zero or more chance nodes in the set C shown as circle representing random variable. It represents random quantities which are associated with a random outcome variable. Value or consequences node. There is at most one value node V drawn as a rounded rectangle which represents the objective to be maximized in expectations. It represents consequences of the decision process. So you can see this is a decision node, this is a chance node and it is a value node or consequence node. There are two types of arcs, conditional arcs and informational arcs. Now conditional arcs indicate dependencies and point only to chance nodes and consequence nodes and informational arcs indicate sequences and point only to decision nodes. So we can see we represent conditional arcs using solid lines and we can represent informational arcs using dotted lines. Here we show some basic influence diagram as follows. Now we can see decision A is made before decision B. So we can see what is the decision node. We can see outcome of C is known before decision D is made. Now decision E is relevant to the assessing the probabilities of outcome of F. So it's a chance node and outcome of G is relevant to the assessing probability of outcome of H. So outcome of G is relevant to the assessing probabilities of outcome of H. Now we represent here few scenarios for different chance, decision and value nodes interconnections. Now we can see here total independent chances. So we can see what is the chance node. So I, J, K, they are independent chances. Now we can see in this particular figure, K is, K is independent, but J is dependent on I, but I is also independent. Now conditional independent chance. So K is dependent on J, J is dependent on I and I is independent chance. We can see here complete dependence chance. So K is dependent on I and J, J is dependent on I and I is independent chance. Now in this particular figure, the value in, the value in or the consequence in depends on the random variable M that is chance and which itself depends upon the decision L. So the value N is dependent on N and chance M is dependent on decision L. Now here, the value n, the value n depends on both the random variable m, chance and the decision l. Okay, and that chance is dependent on the decision. You can see here in this particular figure, the value n depends upon the decision l as well as m. So it value n consequences depend on the chance as well as decision, but the chance is independent. That m is independent of the decision l. Now in this particular figure, the random variable m is observed but has no effect on the value of n and may be considered irrelevant with respect to the decision l. Now in this particular figure, the random variable m is observed before the decision l is made. Okay, so that m is observed before the decision l is made. 
but the value of a is dependent on m as well as a now we can see one example suppose you have rupees 50000 to invest and the objective is to earn as high a return on your investment as possible there are two alternatives investing in a share market and keeping the money in a savings bank account with a fixed interest rate if you invest in a share market you your return depends on the success of the share market you figure there would could be two possible outcomes the share value is either widely high and you earn rupees 20000 beyond your initial investment hence leaving rupees 70000 in total and the share and the second is what the share value is low and you lose rupees 10000 on the other hand if you put your money into the savings bank account you will earn rupees 4000 as interest regardless of share value now draw the inference diagram now we can see here the return is a outcome okay or consequences and that return is depends on investment choice and the business choice independently the investment choice is not depend on the business results and the business result is not depend on the investment choice now so business choice business result so chance so it depends upon the chance okay business result is depends upon the chance so savings account so if it is a savings account it may be success and failure and if it is a share it may be success and failure so if it is a savings account so you will get fixed interest rates so both success and failure it is the same but if it is a share market so if it is a success then we will return the return is 70000 but if it is a failure it is a 40000 so we can see here return is depends upon the business result as well as the investment choice now in another example a hurricane cyclone called hudhud near the visakhapatnam threats to cause several damage as a result the authorities recommend everyone to evacuate although the evacuation is costly you would be safe on the other hand staying is risky you could be injured or even killed if the storms comes ashore within 10 km of your home if the hurricane's path changes however you would be safe without having incurred the cost of evacuating the two fundamental objectives are to maximize your safety and to minimize your cost undoubtedly you will pay close attention to the weather forecasts thus who would predict the course of the storm however the weather forecasters are not perfect predictors because not everything is known before hurricanes now draw the inference diagram now we can see here a uh, cyclone path it's a chance note okay so it may hit the uh, it may hit the shore or it may hit not may not and the forecast it is also a chance note okay and the forecast is depend upon the cyclone path now the decision is based on the forecast so whether we have to evacuate the city or we may have to we have to or the people may stay in the at their home now consequences it depends upon the decision as well as the cyclone path now if it is evacuate and hit the vizag then the consequences are safety but high cost the but if it misses the uh, vizag safety as well as high cost so in both the cases but if you stay and if hits the vizag then danger and low cost because no evacuation cost is there and if it is misses then safety and the low cost now notes on influence diagram influence diagrams provide a snapshot of the decision environment at one point in time influence diagrams are not flow charts and cannot contain any cycles the arrows must indicate how uncertainty is relevant now we discuss the applications of influence diagrams as follows they provide a framework by which a decision maker can reject or confirm assumptions and accurately model dependencies through a graphical presentations complex decision problems may become messy influence diagrams provide a format whereby the large volume of information can be summarized into relevant and sufficient information 
a complex decision may be reduced to a few steps and lines. It provides the ability to capture and communicate the spirit of a problem in an easy to understand manner. Influence diagrams are excellent for showing the relationship between events and the general structure of a decision clearly and concisely. It helps to structure the problem and identifies influences and dependencies between decisions and uncertainties. It develops the logic and structure for the computer decision model. Now we discuss about the construction procedure for of influence diagrams as follows. Identify the types of problem, for example, business, marketing, research, and develop and development, explorations, etc. Put a value model labeled with the decision criteria at the middle of the right hand side of the diagram. To solve the uncertainty, identify the most important informations. Choose one uncertainty and develop it completely before tackling the other nodes. Make sure the nodes are clearly defined and specific. Frequently review the uncertainties on the previous issue raising list. Identify deterministic uncertainty nodes. Try to identify the formula of the values of the nodes. Identify structure of information and write each source's name. Revise the diagram critically and finally write an information gathering task list. In the next video, we'll talk about decision C. And that is the end of this particular video. Thank you very much.